I'd like to open these ceremonies by extending a warm welcome to all of you, students, families, friends, and distinguished guests. We are delighted to see you here and grateful that you have gathered from far and near for this wonderful day. I'd like to offer special thanks to Sheriff Bowler for his special kickoff of the ceremony. With this, the college's 230th commencement, we continue the tradition of flying the flags of each of the 61 country represented by this year's graduates, colorful and inspiring symbols of the world from which our students have gathered. One of the nicest aspects of this weekend is being able to watch our graduates share moments with faculty and with staff who have done so much to make their Williams experience productive and rewarding. I ask therefore that we recognize all members of the Williams faculty and staff with our applause. Not a single graduate would be here today without the support and encouragement of so many people. So I ask that we similarly recognize all of our students, parents, other family members, and friends who are with us today. Three guests we are particularly pleased to welcome this weekend are the recipients of the Olmsted Prize for Excellence in Secondary School Teaching, honored yesterday at the Ivy Exercises. We ask our recipients to please stand and ask the audience to hold applause until all names are announced. Mitch Hahn of Gilderland Center, New York, Shima Khan of Wellesley, Massachusetts, and Liam Leapley of West Haven, Connecticut. Most prizes and fellowships awarded to members of the senior class were announced by Dean Sandstrom yesterday at Ivy Exercises. A list of the recipients, as well as lists of seniors receiving various categories of honors, can be found at the back of the commencement program. Please join me in congratulating them on their wonderful, wonderful achievements. The William Bradford Turner Citizenship Prize was established in memory of Mr. Turner of the class of 1914, who was killed in action in France in 1916. The prize is awarded to that member of the graduating class whose service, leadership, and goodwill have inspired the gratitude and admiration of this community and whose wholehearted embrace of the institution has helped us to see more clearly its higher purpose. This year's recipient has been an exceptional force at Williams and beyond. You have been a crucial contributor across campus, serving as the president of the Black STEM Group, a, a member of the Black Ministries and the Gospel Choir, and an enthusiastic eVenture leader. Beyond Williams, you have worked with children and teachers in the North Adams Elementary School since your arrival on campus four years ago. Beyond all of your concrete accomplishments, your classmates are deeply impressed by your fundamental kindness, your effervescent smile, and your openness to learning from everyone with whom you interact. I now have the pleasure of calling on stage this year's winner of the William Bradford Turner Citizen Prize, Joseph Wilson.
So I purposely went to the wrong podium so he would walk across the stage, get full view by everybody. Okay, <laughs> congratulations. With the ending of this academic year, five members of our faculty will have reached the conclusion of their Williams careers. I now have the pleasure of honoring them this morning. First, Karen B. Quitter. Forty years may be a blip in astronomical time, but it is a resplendent stretch for a career. Over that span, you have repeatedly wowed students with the power, complexity, and beauty of the universe. Many of them you engaged in observations, those in remote locations and those managed remotely from here in Williamstown. Some of the latter even included substantial time at the Hubble Scope Space Telescope. Many of those students have continued in astronomy, including those inspired by your example as an early woman in the field. You have chaired the department, directed the Hopkins Observatory, and helped develop the Keck Consortium that coordinates astronomical teaching and student research at eight Northeastern liberal arts colleges. You have generously shared your interests with local residents and on public radio, and your four books include volumes of hands-on science for middle to high schoolers. Your own research has advanced our understanding of the chemical history of galaxies, how the conditions of life came to exist, and how the dust of long ago stars has come to constitute our very bodies. Many of your research methods have been adopted by colleagues for their own studies of the sky. All of this is heady stuff, though perhaps none more so than finding your soulmate at a meeting of the American Astronomical Society. I thereby declare you Ebenezer Fitch, Professor of Astronomy Emerita, entitled to all the rights, honors, and privileges appertaining thereto. Next, I call up Carol Ackman. One career is enough for most people, but you have managed to live three. As teacher and scholar, you have helped students, alumni, and general audiences experience it more deeply Western art from the 18th century to today. You also helped develop the practice of apprehending art through the lenses of its social and historical contexts, powerfully so in your books on Angra's eroticized bodies and on Sarah Bernhardt, and even your work on the significance of the Barbie doll. At the same time, you have been an award-winning curator, mounting exhibitions of noted breadth and depth at the Jewish Museum in New York City and Florida's Selby Gardens. Then, against all odds, you added a career on the stage. You've taken on the personality of Bernhardt in a series of stage interviews. Your one-woman performance, entitled Sarah Bernhardt's Handkerchief, is a beautiful and fearless examination of the effects of suicide on families. And you now are appearing around the world in the multi-genre troupe that performs Paramodernities, a four-hour exploration of the boundaries of word and dance. These strands, teacher, curator, performer, you have woven together into a career worthy of study. I hereby declare you Robert Sterling Clark, Professor of Art Emerita, entitled to all the rights, honors, and privileges appertaining thereto. Shanti Singham.
As the first Bolin scholar to earn a regular faculty appointment and tenure, you have both studied history and made it. Having grown up on the campus of the University of the West Indies, your first interest was in Caribbean history. There being little support for that work in United States graduate schools, you focused instead on early and modern Europe with an emphasis on the French Revolution. Your dissertation and early work explored police archives and illegal publications to uncover the existence of a stronger and more radical opposition to the monarchy than usually had been depicted. At Williams, you were able to return to your first loves, teaching and writing on the Haitian Revolution and comparative colonialism, along with the importance of gender, race, ethnicity, and religion in the evolution of modern European consciousness. You were the first faculty sponsor for our group's Students of Caribbean Ancestry. You faithfully supported students of all kinds as they rallied to speak truth to power far away and here at home. You have compiled an oral history of blacks in Berkshire, Berkshire County and have served as a leader of the group Historians for Peace and Democracy. In all this, you have enlarged upon the example of your early heroes, C.L.R. James and Walter Rodney as models of the Caribbean intellectual activist. I hereby declare you Professor of History and Africana Studies Emerita entitled to all the rights, honors, and privileges appertaining thereto. <laughs> Stephen P. Souza. After a successful career in private research and development, which included many patents and other advances in the technology of medical imaging, you joined our Department of Astronomy as both a researcher and a resource. As supervisor of the Hopkins Observatory, you have advanced the work of faculty and students, coordinating observations, teaching labs, guiding teaching assistants, supporting expeditions around the world, and being the invaluable technology whisperer to the welter of equipment on which all this work depends. Your countless hours running labs have led to close relationships with students that have continued long after graduation. Your own research, alone and in collaboration, has resulted in a long list of papers and chapters, along with books for school and college age audiences. You have contributed to discoveries regarding Pluto and its largest moon. You were the first author on an equipment-focused paper that has been particularly much cited. Thus, your influence has spread well beyond these surrounding hills. All of this is heady stuff, though perhaps none more than finding your soulmate at a meeting of the American Astronomical <laughs> Society. I thereby declare you Senior Lecturer in Astronomy Emeritus, entitled to all the rights, honors, and privileges appertaining thereto. <laughs> Peter S. Wells, Class of 1979. coaches have had as large an impact on their sport here as you have. The position certainly brought unique challenges. For many years you directed both the men's and women's crew teams. That meant more than a hundred athletes, many of whom had never before touched an oar, training on waters far from campus in equipment both expensive and delicate. When not scheduling transportation, re-rigging shells, and troubleshooting the outboard motor on the launch, you were luring students into a sport they had never considered, raising money and developing our indoor training facility. Your creativity and fundraising from team leaf raking to the Coachella-like experience of the annual Ergathon is matched by your innovative coaching, devo devoted as it has been to exploring ever new ways to challenge your students. On top of all this, 
You have also served at times as sports information director, assistant Nordic ski coach, and coordinator of physical education, all undertaken with your characteristic zeal and attention to detail. Your rowers may not always have been aware of how furiously you were paddling under the water, but they have certainly known and have long appreciated the life lessons that you imparted, discipline, teamwork, and as one alumnus has put it, how to find our leverage and propel ourselves forward. I hereby declare you Assistant Professor of Physical Education Emeritus entitled to all the rights, honors, and privileges appertaining thereto.